So uh, like in the first panel, one of the panelists consulted some of the models. I had a quick chat with GPT-4 and with Lama 2, ask for a question for this panel. So one that came in, and maybe uh, Garrett still staying with you on uh, for your live deployment, uh, quoting, markets are dynamic, ever-changing beasts. How do LLMs adapt to rapid market changes? That, that was the machine that asked that? Yes. Oh, this is, <laughs> That's, I, I'm sorry, Lama to I, I talk give to up. I, like, the machine's going to win at that, at that point, honestly. No, I, I'm not I sure. I did prompt for the toughest <laughs> ones. So. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm not sure right now uh, if LLMs are the technology that will solve that particular problem. Chris, you... Oh, I was, I was going to say, I think that um, LLMs right now are a singular tool it's when you know some of the stuff that you noted around this this is not a quantitative thing uh, being able to take in what we term multimodal inputs and outputs uh, into models where we expand beyond just llms and look at things like computer vision and and um you know recommender systems and and all of that like building that in in an overall package i think is going to be the point where llms as we think about them become effective enough uh and can source unique enough data uh, that that this is able to be something that's relevant. I mean, I always think about the when I first heard about what Bloomberg did, you know, years ago, specifically looking at uh, they were looking at satellite data around um, the shadows on uh, on oil tanks, like on oil storage units uh, and or in uh, gas storage units, something like that. And essentially, like the shadows changing, like changed sort of the was because it was a reflection like the physical change of, of, you know, the storage facility. And it's that type of like bananas, unique data uh, that I think can come from multimodal models as opposed to just purely LLMs. One thing I would also add from my side on the, the challenge, so there may be challenges to the predictive powers and so on, but that in no way stops you from, you know, we call it building your army of robo-analysts, your, your digital labor force uh, that you can deploy, right? I know you guys also talk about virtual, virtual analysts. That does not require that predictive power to solve that, that problem. 